Let's talk about the green iguana. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back. On this Animal Spotlight, we're gonna talk about the green iguana. I know it's been a little while since I've done one of these and I thought it was about that time. Thank you so much to Reptitan888 for the suggestion. That is an awesome name, by the way. So let's talk about the most common reptile in the pet trade today. The green iguana is usually the first reptile that people think about when they think about pet reptiles and that's because they're everywhere. They're super cheap, they're super easy to find, and they have one of the most distinguishing looks of any reptiles. These guys are found in the rainforest of southern North America and South America in places like Mexico and Argentina where they're found in the canopies of those rainforests, which I thought that was really cool. I didn't realize they stayed that high up off of the ground. Normally they only come down to the ground to lay eggs, to to mate and just to change trees. More recently, they have been found in Florida as an invasive species. Anyone that knows anything about Florida knows that they are covered with invasive species and the green iguana happens to be one of those. And these guys are excellent swimmers. They'll actually jump out of those trees into water just to get away from predators. In captivity, these guys are gonna live for up to 20 years and sometimes a little bit longer, while in the wild, they only live for about eight years. And as most of you know, these guys are huge. They can get up to six to seven feet and weigh up to 20 pounds. They're actually one of the largest lizards in the Americas. And aside from their size, they have a few other very recognizable features. They have that very long and very powerful tail that they use to whip predators. They have spikes going all the way down their back. They have the huge dewlap under their chins, which they can extend when they are scared or when they're defensive, or if they just want to let in a little extra heat. They also have those very long and sharp claws, which they use to climb up trees where they hang out and bask and they also have that parietal eye also known as a third eye which helps with detection of the sun for thermoregulation and it also helps them sense shadows of predators overhead and although they're called the green iguana these guys are not just green odds are if you've ever been to any kind of reptile show you have seen blue iguanas and red iguanas they come in all different colors but the most common one is green although they may not look at these guys are herbivorous as babies they'll occasionally eat crickets and snakes nails and little bugs that they find around but as adults they strictly eat vegetation they're gonna eat plants and flowers and they'll occasionally eat fruits but don't let that fool you because they have multiple means of protecting themselves even though they don't really have prey other than that crazy tail whip and those super long sharp claws they do have a very big bite they have sharp teeth and a very strong jaw which they use to protect themselves you might be wondering what exactly they protect themselves from because they are so giant and they live so far up but their two main predators are going to be large birds like hawks and humans. Unfortunately, iguanas are eaten and their eggs are eaten and poachers will harvest them for their leather to make purses and wallets and boots and things like that out of. In addition, sometimes they're used as crocodile bait and deforestation kills tons of these every year. But on to breeding. These guys are going to breed every year during dry season and after mating, the females can actually lay up to 70 eggs. That's insane. And they do that by going to the ground and digging burrows for those eggs. But one cool thing about iguanas is that they will actually dig fake burrows around that area to trick predators so they can't find the real eggs. But once she lays those eggs, she is on her way and they are on their own. Kind of. The babies will sometimes stick together for the first year, which I think is the sweetest thing. On to keeping these guys as pets. As I always say, this is not a care guide. This is just some guidelines that I found for keeping these guys as pets as I do not have a green iguana. But I would like to say that these are not for everyone. There are a very select few that can even keep these as pets. Because of their large size, they require huge habitats and they also require lots of handling and taming to tame these guys down. Like I said, they're huge. You wouldn't want a giant aggressive lizard, so you have to work with them. So the caging requirements for adults are gonna be giant. They are arboreal, so they like to climb, so they're gonna need lots and lots of space. At bare minimum, they're gonna need a 12 foot by six foot by six foot enclosure 
which is very difficult for most people to provide. A lot of times people that live in hot areas will actually build these guys enclosures outside because it's much easier that way. They need very strong UVA and UVB lighting if you're going to keep them inside and they also need a very hot hot spot at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That hot spot has to be obtained using overhead lighting. You cannot use heat pads and definitely definitely not hot rocks with these guys because they will burn themselves. They need the light because as I said earlier they have that parietal eye which is gonna help them find the light and help them thermoregulate. They cannot recognize any heat on their belly which could result in severe burns to your reptile. So you have your 120 degree hot spot and then on the cool side they're gonna need it to be in around the mid 80s. Just like any other reptile they need that temperature gradient so they can thermoregulate. Regulate. And in the wild, they're from rainforest, so they're going to need humidity. They need to be misted daily, and they also need water bowls. That water bowl is going to need to be big enough that they can get in there and soak if they need it. And as for food, they're going to need leafy greens, like turnip greens, collard greens, mustard greens. They can eat dandelions. You can give them squash. You can also give them fruit once a week. And they also make a commercial iguana food that apparently is fantastic for them. It is a very common misconception that these guys need protein. They cannot digest any kind of diet that is high in protein. It could actually lead to renal failure and death. Green iguanas are incredibly smart reptiles. They are one of the few lizards that actually have the ability to recognize their humans. They can be super, super, super sweet, but as I said before, you have to take the time to handle them down. This is a six foot lizard and if the only thing that it knows is that you're going to give it food and it's never handled and it's never taken out and the time is never given to it, it can easily become very aggressive. If you put the time into these guys, they can be the sweetest reptile ever. There's actually an iguana that travels with a breeder here in my area and he is at every single reptile show. I think it's Gecko Junkie, the one that I got my girl Gecko from that has him but he'll literally hang out the entire reptile show and he'll climb along the tops of the shelves and everyone absolutely loves him. So along with those crazy space requirements and the super hot hot spot, you also have to be able to take so much time with these guys to make sure that they're going to be a super sweet, lovable lizard. And unfortunately, a huge number of these die within the first year of captivity because people don't take the time to research and learn what exactly these guys need. So many of them die or they're rehomed or they're sent to rescues or they're just released into the wild. And that's because most of these people didn't research and weren't prepared for these animals when they got it. They just saw an adorable little lizard at the pet store or at a reptile show for 10, 15 bucks and they grabbed it. So as I always say, and especially in this case, if you're thinking about getting a green iguana, please, 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 please research, research, research until you can't research anymore and make sure that you are prepared for this. But anyways guys that's about all I have for the green iguana. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something. If you want to see pictures and videos of my animals throughout the week don't forget to head on over to Instagram and follow me there at l.622 where you can do just that. And if you like this video please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I put out new videos every single Sunday and as always thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.